the exact definition of anemia vary but the term denotes subnormal erythrocyte mass or hemoglobin concentration in the blood then signs include the pale mucous membranes increased heart rate and hypotension diagnosis can be made by complete blood count but may be refined by some additional test then treatment can be symptomatic but often requires addressing the underlying cause in short we can criticize the anemia as low hemoglobin low hematocrit and low rbc counts in the patients so then moving to the classification of anemia we can classify the anemia based on etiological cause and morphological characteristics of rbc under etiology anemia may be produced either by the impaired rbc production excessive destruction or blood loss in impaired rbc production abnormal this might be due to abnormal bone marrow function or deficiency of essential factors in the hematopoietic or hormonal imbalances like hypothyroidism then second cause of anemia that might be due to excessive destruction we occur from hemolytic cause then blood loss anemia might be occur due to acute blood loss like accidental injury or uh, chronic blood loss might be due to chronic infestation of ectoendoparasitism then again morphologically we can classify the anemia as normocytic normochromic anemia microcytic hypochromic anemia and macrocytic anemia let me explain list of reasons or causes for regenerative anemia in veterinary medicine anemia is accompanied by reticulocytosis which is referred as regenerative so practicing veterinarian should aware of reticulocytosis in different species under the regenerative anemia we can classify uh, different classifications so hemorrhagic uh, blood loss or the hemolysis the whole blood loss occur in two ways either blood loss into the body cavity or whole blood which exists the body cavity uh, for example for the the first category is hemoabdomen hemothorax that might be due to erosion of the vessels by abscess or neoplasia or rupture of middle uterine artery the second category which involves uh, uh abomes ulcers parasites like hamantas sucking lice then hemorrhagic gastritis caudal vena cava syndrome and external trauma the anemia due to hemolysis uh, hemolytic cause such as um, anaplasma babesia mycoplasma or rbc parasites uh, that will also causes the regenerative anemia along uh, then basilar hemoglobinuria leptospirosis and some of the toxins uh, or accidental ingestion of iron and brassica and post posturient hemoglobinuria will also leads to regenerative anemia in sheep and goats then anemia without accompanying the reticulocytosis is referred as non regenerative anemia so what are all the causes of non regenerative anemia in the small ruminants the first main cause is the anemia of inflammatory causes such as uh, lymphosarcoma jones disease chronic abscesses liver abscesses and endocrine diseases then anemia of chronic renal failure that due to the decreased erythropoietin then nutritional deficiencies such as um, iron copper cobalt i am mainly concentrating on the iron copper cobalt and some of the intrinsic bone marrow affection such as um, myelopathies and the myelofibrosis which may leads to the uh, bone marrow suppression again i am showing i just i am recalling and remember that regenerative and non regenerative causes of anemia for better diagnosis of uh, diagnostic uh, approach in the anemia and the sheep and goat so regenerative and non regenerative our uh, hemolytic anemia and acute uh, chronic uh, blood loss uh, will come under the regenerative cause whereas the non regenerative which means uh, uh, there is uh, no production of the reticulocytes uh, uh, abnormal bone marrow essential factors deficiency and hormonal imbalances uh. so before going to assess the uh, one patient one must know the normal hematological values and the lab condition so i'm just uh, com uh, comparing it with the cattle red blood cells uh, mcv mcg and the mcg uh, with uh, sheep and goat which are all varies so if mcv and mcg are normal but hemoglobin and hematocrits are low means the patient will falls under the normocytic normochromic anemia then if the mcv mcg values are decreased that means microcytic that means the smaller rbcs than the normal then hypochromic it depends upon the rbc straining then macrocytic hypochromic it uh, indicates increased mcv and mcg this condition is rare in the small ruminants then what is the normal assessment uh, categories for the regeneration in general 
uh, it may applicable to the all species of animals. Huh? If the reticulocytosis counts are more than 6,000 or 1% of the total RBCs, then presence of increased uh, uh, MCV, nucleated RBCs, that means the rubricide, polychromisia, and hypochromisia, which indicates the regenerative anemia. Even though the reticulocytes in the blood circulation uh, is rare in the small ruminants, minimal amount of reticulocytes and polychromisia and rubricides, uh, which indicates regeneration in the anemic patients, especially in the ruminants and the uh, small ruminants. One should aware that uh, regeneration does not uh, detected suddenly in the blood smear. So after it will take uh, two to three days and it will be detected. Mm, peak response will happen four to seven days in the ruminants. So this phase might be pre-regenerative response to the anemic crisis. So we must differentiate non-regenerative anemia from the pre-regenerative response. Basically, goats have the smallest erythrocytes of all domestic animals. Generally, it's a discoid in shape. Uh, when compared to the bovine species, uh, uh, the size of the RBCs is very small. The lifespan of RBCs in the bovine species is 70 to 150 days, whereas the goats is for 125 days. And prominent poikilocytosis may be normal in the small adult goats, that is Angora, and young kids, which is less than three months of uh, age. Then poikilocytosis are rare in the, uh, sorry, uh, polychromatophils are rare in the healthy goats. Similar to the horses, goats do not show prominent reticulocytosis uh, in the uh, response to the anemia. Uh, you can see the different shape of RBCs. This picture shows a normal uh, uh, peripheral blood smear of the uh, young uh, goat. Then poikilocytosis is also seen in the anemic goats with the, uh, adult goats with the anemia. So what are all the physical examination? Pale mucous membrane, weakness, mental depression or aggression. You can see the pale mucous membrane and uh, mental depression, exercise intolerance. Then severe anemia characterized by the melina, hematuria and the generalized weakness. Even the animals uh, may not be able to move. So in this situation, what are all the basic uh, things we can do in the field level? You can check the five point check indicators for the affected goats. The first one is the nose. You have to observe for any discharge is there. Then second thing is the, we have to look to the eyes for the color of the, uh, to check the color of the mucous membrane. Then third one is the jaw. You have to monitor for any bottle jaw is there in that patient, which indicates a hypoproteinemia. Then uh, fourth one is the body condition scoring. Whether the animal is um, uh, fatty or emaciated, you can give the scoring for a, animals. Then fifth one is the uh, tail soiling, which means the dag formation. If the animal having no fecal soiling at all, you can give the score zero. So there is no need uh, of treatment in the particular cases. Then very slight soiling on the edge of the uh, tail or each side, you can give the score of one. This also uh, no need uh, of uh, any uh, any interventions. Then if the uh, slight soiling on edge of the tail on each side, you can give the score of 2. Uh, this also uh, no need of any treatments. Then moderate soiling or DAG formation. You just consider the treatment or action. You can give the score of 3. Then for this case, severe soiling and severe DAG formation is there, then you can give the DAG scoring for and treatment is recommended for the particular cases. Now. Then uh, this particular uh, case having the very severe watery diarrhea, uh, this DAG formation extended up to the hawk region. You can give the score of 5 and treatment is essential. Then followed by the furniture charts. It's basically chart for anemic guidelines developed for the sheep. The first picture shows optimal mucous membrane color, uh, pink and uh, moist. Then se second one is the acceptable mucous membrane color, pale pink. Then third one is the borderline mucous membrane. It may need the treatment. Then fourth one is the dangerous color of the mucous membrane. So in this uh, stage, we should intervene the case. Then fifth uh, picture shows the fatal papery white mucous membrane. It's a, in this stage, essential treatment along with narrowing of causes of anemia should be ruled out. 
then how will you approach the regenerative anemia in the field level so you uh, just uh, uh, remember it might be classified as hemorrhagic cause or hemolytic cause hemorrhagic cause will occur maybe due to the external hemorrhage so some of the important ectoparasites which bites up small ruminants are damalina species or goat biting louse then bovicola species uh, of uh, ovis uh, sheep biting louse mostly present on the back and upper parts of the um, animals and uh, Uh, this picture shows the lignonathus species it goes it's usually present on the head and neck of the animal and is uh, other species are uh, usually present throughout the body in addition to taking the blood these parasites cause irritation rubbing which results in damages to the hair coat hide and wool it will make uh, indirect loss to the farming community by the loss of wool and high quality then extremely high population of uh, all these ecto and endo parasites will cause the anemia abortion and even death in the small ruminants uh, one more things the ticks can transmit the hemoprotozoan diseases uh, like babesia thylaria nanoplasma excess acariasis also leads to anemia then internal hemorrhage for that we have to look the basic of fetal examination and examine the animal for the typical signs of uh, parasitism some such as weight loss diarrhea uh, rough hair coat weakness anemia fever or uh, cold extremities if it is a fast breathing and coughing is there you have to uh, think about the lung worm dictyo calla species if the bottle jaw is there especially it will notice in the stomach worms and the liver flukes so no need to worry about the shape worms so careful examination of the hair coat of external parasites should always be performed on anemic patients to check for hematophagic uh, parasites including lice and ticks so this picture shows the tape form and uh, um, bottle jaw appearance uh, this picture shows the uh, infective stage of uh, hemonchus uh, larvae so it's a predominant uh, it is the hemonchus is the predominant uh, uh, organism or uh, endoparasite which causes the anemia in the small ruminants and it's a highly pathogenic and economically important disease it will cause the anemia submandibular edema weight loss little thrift and if we didn't notice uh, sometimes death may occur in heavily infected animals so what are all the clinical features of hemonchus infection you can classify it uh, depends upon the clinical signs hyperacute acute subacute and long acting hyperacute means severe anemia is the severe death is there in acute form the, uh, again we can classify it into three stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 in subacute form uh, reduced growth rate uh, will be there reduced milk and meat and wool production long standing cases uh, uh, it mainly affected the meat and wool production of the animal it's all possible with our simple light microscope and basic training basic training for particularly for the some blood uh, protozoans for microscopy examination we have to prepare the thin blood smear and allow the slides to add dry before fixing with the absolute methanol then strain it with the 10% gemsa and observe under the oil microscope usually 25 films you have to exam from each slide for the presence of hemoparasites uh, then organisms was identified on the basis of morphology it's a basic strain is the gms if we can afford double we can buy the diff quick strain it will uh, cost around uh, 40000 but uh, you can get uh, uh, within one minute you can get the results uh, means uh, the strain will be prepared very easily uh, it's contain a uh, three quick strains first one is the fixative the methanol then uh, solution one is the eosinophilic strain and solution two is the basophilic strain slides are dipped Uh, sequentially into the each solution six times or left uh, um, for uh, 10 to 15 seconds in each solution then uh, after that finally wash the slides in the uh, running tap water and dry it if you collected the suspected cases of thylariosis uh, lymph node aspiration uh, if you are collecting means sample should be dipped more or left longer because these dip quick strains under uh, under strain the lymphocytes uh, uh, lymph node uh, aspirate uh, cytological examination so so such a sample should be dipped more le- or left longer in the last strain now the next we will see about the hemolytic causes of anemia in the sheep and goat so what are all the hemolytic causes it might be occur due to anaplasma mycoplasma ovis thylaria or babesia 
the anaplasma ovis is an obligate intracellular rickettsia pathogen infecting rbcs in the domestic or wild and sheep and goats normally it produces the uh, icteric uh, mucus membrane icteric buccal mucus membrane and the icteric uh, this case we have attended in our clinic uh, and it confirmed that it's a case of anaplasma uh, infection with a uh, icteric uh, abdominal area exotic ticks uh, will act as a vector for anaplasma ovis but uh, mechanical transmission via fomite or biting flies can also occur in subclinical subclinical or uh, mildly clinical infection is most common whereas the severe clinical signs are uncommon but can include marked anemia and the death of a particular animal the peripheral blood smear showed round to ovoid basophilic inclusion at the periphery of the rbcs then mycoplasma ov is induced hemolytic anemia hemolytic uh, i mean hemotrophic mycoplasma species that is globally distributed and often of a non pathogenic in the sheep and goat but up to my knowledge it is not yet reported from india or we may not confirm the case um, the mycoplasma ov is in mycoplasma ov is lambs suffer fatal infection more than the adult sheep then goats develop a lower level of, levels of parasitemia than sheep organisms these organisms can be seen on the blood smear as small to ovoid papai to rod shaped structures uh, less than 1 micrometer in diameter and uh, which used to adhere to the rbcs and may seen in the background it may seen in the background so because of the attachment of the rbcs uh, finally results in the hemolysis with the possible progression to the hemolytic anemia hemoglobinuria jaundice is the front possibly death then moving to the thylariosis thylario species are the tick vector protozoan parasites in erythrocytic pyroplasm stage this parasite causes a variable hemolytic anemia in sheep and goat suspected cases of uh, animal so signs of pyrexia zowl edema anorexia dyspnea salivation emaciation and uh, particularly enlargement of the superficial lymph nodes uh, in sheep and goat thylaria luwenzuni in sheep and thylaria Mm, Yulen berki or uh, thylaria species are reported. Thylaria organisms are appear in the blood smear as a polychromatophilic uh, uh, structures that are often round to piriform in shape. To confirm the uh, the most sensitive test uh, is the PCR. So, so PCR examination is more sensitive to the active infection than blood smear examination. If you are suspecting for the thylariosis with a uh enlarged lymph nodes you can take the lymph node aspiration cytology in which uh, you can able to see the zygon state organisms found in the lymphocytes in the lymphoid tissues uh, but it uh, generally not seen in the white blood cells uh, which we are uh, taking uh, in the blood circulation uh. next moving to the uh, babesiosis uh, hemolytic anemia due to the babesiosis uh, um, if the uh, case having the mucopurulent nasal discharge dyspnea coughing or uh, icteric uh, sclera or oral mucosa hematochesia coffee colored uh, urine and uh, if you uh, if you are auscultating uh, you can able to find the tachycardia tachypnea and respiratory vessels in the babesiosis uh, and it will also cause the thrombocytopenia neutrophilia hypoproteinemia which results uh, uh, which end up with a uh, bottle jaw and hyperbilirubinemia and hemoglobinemia the red arrow indicate uh, it's a gemso strain smear Uh, red arrow indicates the intracellular uh, baby cell species, whereas the blue arrow uh, indicates the immature neutrophil uh, with unsegmented nucleus. In uh, which type of classification it may come from? Baby cell species uh, induces a significant reduction in the MCV, MCX, and MCXC, so it will fall under the microcytic hypochromic anemia. Then hemolytic anemia from leptospirosis in sheep. Leptospira intravenous zero or scarred jaw and pomona will cause a fatal intravascular hemolysis with the resultant ictus, hemoglobinuria, and uh, pigment nephropathy. Goats are also susceptible to febrile illness from leptospirosis. In subclinical uh, infections, are commonly associated with abortion, stillbirth, infertility, and weak lambs or kids. The last cause of hemolytic anemia. presence of uh, clostridium novae type t infection basilar hemoglobinuria in sheep uh, febrile disease with a uh, severe hemolytic anemia uh, will be there uh, with a high morbidity uh, mostly endemic infection is associated with facial hepatica liver fluke infection then hemolytic anemia from accident injuries normally the accident injury to rbcs can result in the formation of hains bodies hains bodies are nothing but 
it's uh, aggregates of denatured hemoglobin that uh, cause rbc membrane to protrude sheep and goats are less susceptible to the oxidative injury than cattle dog and cats it suffer if uh, accidental ingestion of uh, high qualities of uh, the oxidant uh, substances it's reported in the lambs deficient in the copper and selenium and goats are extremely um the hens bodies are prematurely prematurely removed from the blood circulation then lambs uh, are uh, compared to the goats lambs are uh, most commonly affected uh, even uh, predisposing factors for the oxidant uh, injury is the low molybdenum and chronic uh, copper toxicity once uh, exposure of the erythrocytes to the oxidant toxins medications or some other chemicals occurring means Uh, in blood circulation, oxidation of sulfate group of uh, hemoglobin will results uh, will leads to the formation of the disulfide bonds. So that hemoglobin is denatured and precipitated as hain body hain's bodies. Uh, these um, hain's bodies are prematurely removed uh, in the circulation by the macrophages or presumably in the spleen. And oxidative damage to the RBC membrane will leads to increased the red cell fragility. that cause the intravascular hemolysis normally in oxidative injury to the iron within the hemoglobin will form the methemoglobin so the animal will have the pigmenturia in new methylene blue strain the large hain bodies hains bodies are appear as knob like extensions whereas the smaller hains bodies are uh, appear as small refractile areas of the cytoplasm here you can see the smaller refractile areas uh, within the cytoplasm here you can be able to appreciate the large hains bodies knob like uh, extensions in the uh, oxidative injury then hemolysis from miscellaneous causes goats are extremely prone to many metabolic diseases including post opportunity hemoglobinuria because phosphorus is crucial to maintain the integrity of the cell membrane of erythrocytes at parturition if any deficiency of phosphorus in the serum leads to the it uh, it will makes the erythrocyte more fragile lies will cause the hemoglobinuria and uh, hemoglobinemia so what are all the concurrent uh, deficiencies uh, may contribute the rbc fragility is copper or selenium then predisposing factors uh, for the uh, hemolysis of other causes are uh, cold water or uh, grazing on the frozen pasture so up to this what uh, we see in the what are the causes of regenerative anemia in the sheep and goat under classification based on the etiology next we are moving to the non regenerative anemia non regenerative anemia occurs as a result of decreased or ineffective erythropoiesis which reduces or diminishes erythropoiesis is associated with various specific mechanisms like impaired hormonal stimulation diminished availability of nutrients micro or macronutrients toxic insult to the bone marrow uh, might be Uh, some of the cancer uh, cancerous growth are uh, recognized as cycle of a wide uh, array of primary diseases uh. then ineffective erythropoiesis a relatively uncommon condition in veterinary species is characterized by anemia despite normal to increased erythropoietic activity so in this stage you have to remember without an appropriate compensatory hematopoietic uh, response is there means in the particular animal the animal will goes to non regenerative anemia then just i am uh, recalling non regenerative anemia that may be due to abnormal bone marrow essential factor deficiency and hormonal imbalance so first primary cause of uh, anemia of non regenerative origin is the iron deficiency anemia i uh, hallmark feature of uh, anemia of uh, inflammation is decreased concentration of plasma iron what will happen it uh, once the plasma ions are uh, reduced it uh, congestion with the increased storage of iron in the tissues so what will happen uh, next to the sequestration and the functional deficiency of the iron mainly uh, the dietary iron the dietary iron is absorbed mainly in the duodenum uh, only in the form of ferrous uh, state and transported across the epithelial membrane and transported across the epithelial membrane of enterocytes by divalent metal transporter then uh, the iron is exported across the basolateral membrane of enterocytes by ferroportin then bound to the 
transfer in the plasma or uh, transported to the target organ for the storage if if the ion storage are adequate or high if the ion storage is adequate or high the hepcidin is released from the liver and binds to the transportion and causing the destruction of uh, destruction of uh, ferroportina if the ion stores are low if the ion stores are low the hepcidin production secretions are suppressed and increasing the ion uh, efflux from the uh, ion efflux from the enterocytes into the blood so what are the ion deficiency uh, sequelae depletion of the blood ion stores and ion deficiency anemia are associated some metabolic disinfections uh, duodenum's ability to absorb the dietary ion is very limited but it can be upregulated upregulation in the ion absorption secondary to the chronic blood loss and resulting in the ion deficiency so iron deficiency will occur might be due to acute blood loss or chronic external blood loss so what are all the reasons for the chronic external blood loss or ectoparasites and thrombocytopenia uh, thrombocytopathy or gastrointestinal hemorrhages like uh. so what you can es- expect uh, during the iron deficiency anemia in uh, peripheral blood smear you can able to see the microcytic hypochromic anemia normally if the iron deficiency normally the hemolytic disorders do not cause the iron deficiency why because the destroyed rbcs remain within the body and allowing for adequate recycling of the heme ion how will you approach the iron deficiency anemia patients uh, you can classify whether the patient is stable or unstable if the patient is unstable you can uh, right away go for the blood transfusion uh, or if the patient is stable and uh, you can check for the underlying disease or prevent the further uh, blood loss and treat the anemia Uh, with um, oral iron supplementation if the oral iron supplementation is well tolerated then check the parameters and continue the supplementation as needed if uh, the patient is uh, not tolerated or uh, uh, see uh, or uh, the animal has having the mal absorption you can choose the parental iron uh, supplementation this red arrow indicate the uh, i already mentioned microcytic hypochromic anemia will be there in the iron deficiency so the red arrows indicate the hypochromic or disease then black arrow indicate the polychromatophilic or disease blue arrow head uh, indicates the polychromatophilic or disease with a base of flick or stippling the next moving to the copper essential uh, nutrient copper perform a number of uh, essential roles in the body as a component of various proteins uh, through metallo enzymes that require copper to sustain their biological functions so what are all the copper containing metallo enzymes first one is the cerebro um, ceruloplasmin then tyrosinase uh, which is responsible for the formation of the melanin and the lysyl oxidase which modifies the specific amino acids within the collagen protein that facilitate uh, cross linkage between the collagen fibers then cytochrome c oxidase is related to the myelin formation in the brain and spinal cord the most and last uh, important one is the erythrocyte superoxide uh, desmodase shortly we can say esod through the metallo enzymes copper can be associated with the iron regulation red cell formation cellular respiration bone and connective tissue formation hair pigmentation nerve tissue and cardiac development and immune function how it will cause the anemia both copper deficiency and copper excess can result in anemia although the mechanism of anemia is different in each case uh, copper deficiency again we can classify it, it might be uh, due to primary copper deficiency or secondary copper deficiency primary copper deficiency uh, is mainly due to the low level of copper in the soil then secondary copper deficiency uh, it's maybe due to high level of molybdenum iron or sulfur uh, that makes the copper less available for the use by the animal so what you can expect in the copper deficiency anemia mostly there are no cases only we are getting the anemia then poor appetite and growth faded hair color poor fleece mostly bleached out condition and musculoskeletal problems in case of copper toxicity what will happen the rbcs will rupture then rapid onset of weakness depression anemia and even acute death is to be there normally goats tolerate excess copper better than the sheep during the copper deficiency it also decreases the absorption of the iron and releasing of iron because uh, it involves the hepcidin uh, it uh, inhibits the releasing of iron from the body stores and uh, it's again utilization of the hemoglobin for the synthesis then reduction in the copper containing metallo uh, uh, metallo enzymes like uh, cerebro uh, ceruloplasmin activity this enzyme transport the iron from stored cells to the intestine and liver if there any deficiency it may not happen 
and one more important enzyme is the transferase which are usually transfer the iron to bone marrow to synthesize the hemoglobin so reduced uh, liberation of the iron from the normally broken erythrocytes will happen uh, if the any deficiency of the transferase so at this stage what are the uh, how you can diagnose the uh, copper uh, either reduction in the cephaloplasmin activity even a sod estimation or transferase enzyme estimation you can confirm the case it has a copper deficiency the terminal am anemia will happen in the copper deficiency it usually has a uncoordinated movement in the newborn sway back or insipic ataxia uh, loss of muscular coordination uh, then uncoordinated movements would be there paresis of the hind limb impossibility to circle in early stages and uh, spasmodic contraction generalized tremor and convulsions used to be there uh, like uh, iron deficiency anemia this will also because it's uh, uh, these minerals are uh, um, interlinked it also causes the microcytic hypochromic anemia so what are the normal plasma uh, cephaloplasmin content in the sheep it range of 45 to 100 microgram per liter plasma copper level if the plasma copper level goes below 25 microgram per deciliter which represents the hypocoprosis uh, the better estimation is the liver copper and nowadays uh, uh, they are adding the estimation of copper content of the hair as a diagnostic test the next moving to the cobalt and vitamin b12 uh, these two are also interlinked why Uh, means the cobalt is essential for the ruminal microorganism to synthesize the vitamin B12, and this vitamin B12 will act as a several enzyme uh, cofactor for several enzyme systems and promoting the red cell synthesis. It's needed for the B12 dependent pathway uh, to require uh, methyl cobalamin as a cofactor. If any failure of this pathway uh, will lead to reduction of DNA replication in the RBCs and cause the megaloblastic anemia. Most of the cases we are usually getting uh, normocytic, normochromic anemia in the small ruminants. So, what are other uh, clinical signs of copper? Uh, sorry, cobalt deficiency. Uh, the sheep or goat will have the poor growth rates, small size, and the poor body condition, lethargy, poor appetite, uh, tear straining, anemia, immunosuppression, and emaciation and death. Then moving to the anemia of chronic renal failure. This picture shows the mechanism underlying anemia of chronic renal failure. Iron, iron, and uh, EPO, erythropoietin, are uh, crucial for the RBC production in the bone marrow. Iron availability is controlled by the liver hormone hepcidin, which liver hormone hepcidin, which regulates dietary iron absorption and um, uh, recycling. In case of CKD patient, what will happen? The hepcidin levels. Highly elevated, which inhibits the once the hepcidin levels are uh, elevated, which inhibits the EPO erythropoietin uh, uh, production by the kidneys and production of uremic induced inhibition of uh, erythropoiesis and leads to the shortened RBC lifespan and increase the blood loss. So it is a multifactorial process due to relative uh, erythropoietin deficiency, uremic induced inhibitors of erythropoiesis, shortened uh, erythrocyte survival and disorder. iron uh, homeostasis uh, and also uh, hepcidin excess uh, as a main contributor to the disorder iron homeostasis and anemia of the ckd by impairing the dietary iron absorption and iron mobilization from the body stores uh. so what are the other minor causes of uh, bone marrow defects uh, and that might be primary tumor or secondary tumor uh, uh, what are the uh, some disease conditions uh, Which affect the uh, directly bone marrow myelopathies, destruction of normal hematopoietic cells, and alteration of bone marrow micro uh, environment, and inhibition of growth factors, induction of cytokines, and induction of fibrosis. Uh, normally, the hemostatic disorders can result from either primary or secondary hemostatic problems. Uh, severe thrombocytopenia is a primary hemostatic disorder that can result in the spontaneous hemorrhage. The general causes of thrombocytopenia include the increased consumption or myelopathies or consumptive coagulopathy in viral vasculitis like bluetang in the sheep. So increased platelet destruction occur in other species, but it's minimal in the small ruminants. So what are the hemophagic syndromes, which also causes the hemolysis, hypercytokinemia, excess stimulation, and proliferation of non-neoplastic macrophages and unrestrained phagocytosis of the cells. The signs of coagulopathies include the epistaxis, melina, hematoma formation, and potentially fatal hemorrhage after trauma or surgery. So, what are the miscellaneous causes of uh, anemia in the sheep and goats? Uh, 
anemia of the chronic disease uh, uh, we already discussed about the renal failure uh, other than that lumpy skin disease mycoplasma parotuberculosis chronic toxicity and uh, blue term also uh, will cause the decreased erythrocyte production then uh, blood loss uh, abomisalcerin hemolytic anemia under the hemolytic anemia we can see the selenium then morphological classification just i am uh, recalling normocytic normochromic anemia uh renal failure chronic diseases and regenerative causes will cause us the normocytic normochromic anemia and uh, iron and copper deficiency will cause the microcytic hypochromic anemia and macrocytic hypochromic anemia is rare in the small ruminants normocytic normochromic anemia anemia of the chronic disease renal failure early folate deficiency everything will come then what uh, what are the possibilities at the field level so field level what are the things we can do so we can ask the history of the animal or a herd and we can inquire about the exercise intolerance weakness lethargy and depressed alimentation and on the clinical examination by auscultating uh, uh, we can find out any dyspnea tachypnea and the hemic murmurs are there then again uh, kamacha kamacha classification then uh, dag scoring you have to see the dag scoring then blood smear examination and the blood indices uh, you have to check for the hematocrit mcv mcg and mcg c Uh, at the institution level you can go for pcr or serological examination and fecal sample analysis also you can able to do under the blood smear examination i already explained about the iron deficiency it will cause the microcytic hypochromic anemia and uh, if it is the animal having the acute blood loss or decreased rbc or hemoglobin concentration that may have the normocytic normochromic anemia or you can able to see any shape or uh, uh, shape Uh, uh, changes in the shape or uh, sizes of the orbices uh, and uh, you can proceed with the auto examination or home test uh, that may be due to immune mediated hemolytic anemia or uh, uh, hemolytic causes uh. then uh, you have you can able to see the urine analysis uh. the readily available urine analysis strips are there so hemolysis may be clinically suspected based on the uh, jaundice or mucous membranes or intravascular hemolysis may result in the visible uh, hemoglobinuria urine analysis is a more uh, sensitive method for reduction of uh, pigmenturia and help to rule out the renal or post renal causes of uh, discolored urine so at your level uh, what are all the things you can able to buy you can uh, able to buy the uh, urine analysis strips uh, or with a automated urine analyzer gems or strain and uh, one light microscope for the and also to check the specific gravity of the urine you can have that refractometer uh, what are the helminthic infected uh, goats has surgically it has a decreased uh, hemoglobin concentration pcv and a total erythrocyte count and uh, increased esr and tlc biochemical parameters uh, coming to the biochemical parameters uh, albumin levels uh, are decreased because of that only uh, they usually have the bottle job and the severe anemia is often present in the small ruminants with a severe hamangas contactus uh, infestation depending upon the chronicity of uh, infestation and the diet secondary iron deficiency may develop with hypochromia microcytosis uh, uh, on the microscope what can we do with a uh, fecal sample analysis uh, one is the identification of the endoparasites uh, any parasitic eggs are there or not then second one is the uh, fecal occult blood normally measuring a fecal occult blood rely on the peroxidase activity of the heme which catalyzes the color changes um yearly direction of uh, eminent hemochromatosis is uh, possible uh, by doing the heme test it also gives the positive positivity uh, for the phaseolysis coccidiosis under some bacterial enteritis uh, this is also available in market and uh, some of the Uh, research uh, were done in the even uh, ruminants and the small ruminants the next one is the hemoglobinometer it's also readily uh, available it's just uh, cost around uh, 5000 rupees and hemoglobin uh, color scale it's actually developed for the human medicine uh, efforts to estimate the hemoglobin without the use of the the previous shown the laboratory equipments means you can buy the consumable uh, such as uh, hpcs uh, the performance of this test in cattle is reported to be good for the reduction of the moderate to severe anemia but uh, um, much more uh, research has to be done for the small ruminant side uh, the bo- this both uh, requires the drop of blood drop of blood uh, that applied in the specified uh, specialized uh, trips uh, trips uh. so how we will treat the anemic cases sir 
So basically, there are three broad spectrum families of uh, anti-helminthic drugs adopted for use in the veterinary medicine. Uh, accurate. Uh, so before uh, going to give the accurate medicine, you have to weigh the animal and uh, correct the dosing. Correct dosing should be done. Uh. So these three broad spectrum families uh, comes on. Uh, what are the means? Ah, uh, benzimidazole, levamisole, and uh, macro macrocyclic lactones. Uh, that uh, that means. Um, Ivermectin and moxidexin, you can give at the dose rate of 0.2 mg per kg body weight. And Levamsol, it is a potent term. Um, even a moderator also, you can give um, uh, 7.5 mg per kg body weight per also. How you will control the, uh, what are all the steps uh, we can take to control the ectoendoparasites? Uh, so, it will cause the direct and indirect crossing to the forming community, uh, especially for the small ruminants. Uh, so you can use the synthetic pyrethroids as foron or spartan preparation or macrocyclic lactones as foron and the injectable solutions. Then you have to maintain the uh, maintain and uh, keep good hygiene and sanitation in the animal houses. Uh, if you if you are doing the group of animals, uh, dipping and spraying of animals with insecticidal solution at uh, uh, intervals is needed. Then uh, manage pasture to reduce the number of uh, worm larvae. Avoidance or drainage of uh, snail habitats. It's uh, mainly important for the control of uh, um, important uh, uh, snail habitats, important for the antistroms, uh, then uh, uh, sorry, system systems, uh, then uh, control of liver flu. So you have to use the fluoxicidal drugs, oxyclosinate, triclobendazole, or albendazole. So, what you will do for the nutritional disorders? Uh, so, I am, I already discussed about the if the patient is stable or non stable, whatever, uh, orally or apparently, are included in the transmission. Ferrous sulfate is uh, more commonly available than the ferrous gluconate and uh, fumarate, but all the forms are uh, accepted in the small ruminants. And several months of iron supplementation is needed. Uh, you won't uh, get immediate result. Uh, then coming to the copper, you can uh, add the feeding salt with uh, that means the blocks. Uh, 0.5 to 2 percent additional copper as copper sulfate. Then commercially available uh, uh, copper preparations are also there. Then dosing with the gelatin capsules containing copper wires. Uh, it's all practicing in the abroad. I don't uh, think so. We are whether uh, I don't know idea about whether we are using here. Then adding copper tablets to the water and fertilizing pulses with the uh, copper. Uh, what are the recommended concentration? Uh, so the recommended concentration uh, for the cattle is 0.5% to 1.9%. Uh, for the sheep is 0.25 to 0.5%. Actually, uh, this one is the copper glazomage. So injectable uh, copper glycinate uh, uh, they are using uh, for the adult cattle, but uh, no more studies are there in the uh, small ruminants. Uh, one injection may be effective as a treatment and supplement for up to four to six months uh, in cases of primary copper deficiency. So other things uh, you are really practicing in the field. Uh, what are the things we are, we are going to do for the anaplasmosis, babesiosis, and uh, filariosis? Uh, specific drugs. So, uh, uh, along that, uh, the vitamin B12, we can give 100 microgram per uh, week. The next, uh, we are moving to the transfusion medicine. Uh, the transfusion, uh, at which, uh, which stages we can uh, transfuse? Uh, that may be acute trauma, parasitism, toxicosis, or immune mediated, and in cases, we can choose the plasma, mm, we can choose the blood transfusion if the PCV is less than 15 to 20 percent in the acute loss. In case of chronic anemia, or the PCV is less than 10 to 15, we can choose the animal for the transmission. So what are the uh, additional clinical variables? Uh, we have to look for the transmission. We have to assess for the plasma protein level, hemoglobin concentration, plasma lactate concentration. It's better to assess uh, through the arterial blood gas uh, than clinical signs. Uh, what are the blood group systems are there in the sheep and goats? So there are seven blood group systems in the uh, sheep, uh, like uh, cattle, it's also having the R factor, uh, similar to the J factor in the cattle, it's absorbed onto the erythrocyte membranes from the plasma. In goats, there are at least six uh, blood group systems identified in the goats, although much less developed than the other species. Uh, several goat blood uh, group factors can cross-react with the sheep blood typing regions. Uh. So what are the uh, commonly available anticoagulants uh, uh, for the uh, Blood collections include sodium citrate acid, or antiviral, citrate dispersed, or CPD, or heparin. So, before going to the uh, transmission, uh, basically, first transmission, uh, we don't need to see the agglutination test. 
uh, it more uh, much reactions won't be there in the first transmission even though we can do uh, uh, to take the you just to take the recipient serum one drop and uh, take the donor serum and mix it uh, uh, mix it up and you can see visibly whether any agglutination is there and uh, you can also able to visualize uh, it under the microscopic uh, uh, any role as formation of there or not so if you are uh, uh, transmitting the uh, whole blood to the uh, small kids or lambs huh? uh, you can take a uh, five units per m um, five units of heparin per ml of blood uh, if uh, readily available cpdm bags are available uh, so if you are doing a continuous uh, transmission means uh, you can take one ml of cpdm from the bag uh, with a seven ml of blood and uh, Uh, you can uh, immediately transfer the uh, blood to the donor. Uh, just I am um, uh, recollecting the regenerative anemia. Uh, it might be hemorrhagic or hemolysis cause that comes under the ectoparasitism, GA parasitism, infectious agent syndrome. And uh, non-regenerative anemia, it might be due to nutritional toxic causes, iron deficiency, and renal failure. So FAT control of GA parasite is always uh, uh, triggering. to help the uh, forming community and you have to check for the cost effectiveness of the treatment too so what are the take home points normally high producing females are more susceptible to the internal parasites goats that graze are more susceptible to the parasites than those that browse then periporcine females have reduced the immunity to the internal parasites among the all other endoparasites the hemochromes is the primary parasite affecting the sheep and goats and uh, while well, uh, uh, giving the anti helminthic uh, you have to think over the anti helminthic resistance because it's a wide uh, worldwide problem and uh, you can ready to keep the formacha chart and uh, you have to keep it mind about the dax scoring thank you